I think we're all familiar with this. Don't do bad things. Do good things. It's true. There are things we should avoid because they can only harm us and those around us. However, most of the things we decide about in life don't clearly fit into one of these categories. Even a good thing, if it's all you ever do, can be too much. So I propose a new diagram. On the left is the carefree life of personal liberty. On the right, the lifestyle bound by rules and service to others. On the left, we do whatever we want, regardless of other people's wants or needs. On the right, we do whatever other people want, regardless of what we want or need. There are lots of words to characterize these sides, but let's boil it down to freedom and rules, which can mean other people's rules for us, or even our own rules for ourselves, just rules in general. Now, the act of eating a brownie probably involves moving from the right toward the left. Do what you want, be carefree. But what that looks like depends on where you already are. The more brownies you're already eating in your day-to-day -day life, the farther you'll be to the left, and the fewer the farther to the right. Both of these extremes can be unhealthy. If you never resist your desires, you'll probably have a hard time maintaining your health. But if you live in such a way that you don't allow yourself anything enjoyable or self-serving, you're probably going to get burnt out. I know a lady whose body is overweight, so she practices a diet. However, every other Friday, she loosens these restrictions and lets herself drink soda. To me, this seems healthy, because she's practicing the discipline she needs for her health while making sure that these rules don't stifle or control her. She balances sacrifice and celebration because he has a reason to do both. Of course, this is about more than just food. I'm just using a brownie as an example to show that what we want and what we should do can be compatible. It's just about bringing together the best of both. Now I want to go a little deeper. We have one more layer to add. High self-esteem and low self-esteem. Some people naturally feel good and confident about themselves. Maybe even think that they're better, or that they know better than others. Other people naturally look down on themselves, see their own faults and worry about them, and tend to regard other people as better than them. As with the freedom and rules spectrum, there are messages in life urging us to move in one or the other of these directions. For example, messages like, you are special, and be yourself, encourage us to value ourselves. However, this is only helpful if you actually need to move in that direction. Many of us do need to learn to accept our personalities and experiences. However, some people already naturally value themselves so much that what they need is to learn to value other people too. Let's simplify this visually. Blaise Pascal wrote that a virtue without its opposite becomes a vice. And I think we've already seen that with this diagram. Someone who's naturally humble will know their own limitations, and that can be helpful. But if all you can see is your own limitations, you'll never try or learn something new. Someone who's naturally proud will not be hindered by feelings of inadequacy. But if all you can see is your own strength, you may not be prepared to fail. So both of these virtues, confidence and humility, can help us as long as we have both. Maybe you, like me, naturally obey others and follow the rules. Being good at self-control and submission is a strength, but it can also make us vulnerable to perfectionism or letting ourselves become a doormat for others. And so we also need to learn to stand up for our own needs and self-care, because we have to take care of ourselves, too. Now, a person on the other side doesn't let others push them around and follows his or her own heart, and that's a strength, too. But he or she may also have a hard time listening to others, or having limits for themselves. So it's good to learn both virtues, freedom and rules, self-determination and submission. Confidence, humility, submission, and self-determination are all good things. We just need these opposites to balance each other. Because if we don't, we might end up limited to one of these quadrants. The upper right quadrant, for example. You may have met people who follow the rules and take so much pride in it that they act like they're better than you. These are people who don't eat any brownies 
and they think that makes them better than those who do. On the other side, you may have met people who eat all the brownies they want. Some people indulge themselves because they think they don't need any help, and so they don't take other people's helpful advice seriously. Even if they kind of want to cut back, they don't choose to get other people's help to keep them accountable. However, there are also people who eat too many brownies not because they think they're alright, but because they know they aren't. If you've felt this way, or known people who do, then you know that lack of self-worth can sap your ability to follow healthy rules, or to participate in social situations. And then these unhealthy practices just make you feel even worse about yourself. You feel bad, so you eat brownies. And then you feel worse because you ate brownies. And finally, in the lower right, there are people who feel so bad about themselves and are afraid they won't measure up, that they make strict rules for themselves, like never eating a brownie. However, these rules are so strict that they just make it that much harder to measure up, and no matter what you do or don't do, it's never enough. Whichever side you lean toward, perfectionism or lonely self-indulgence for one reason or another, good news, you're already halfway toward the center. Because as we've already said, each of these directions is a good thing. There is good in your natural tendencies. The middle borders all four outer areas, because there's a place for all these edges. There are times we need to just relax and do what we feel like for our own health. And there are times we need to let other people and healthy practices speak into our lives. We do well to accept our strength and our weakness. I would encourage you to find the place that all of these have in your life. I hope this chart can help you appreciate where you are coming from and where your neighbor is coming from. Although they see things differently, people starting from other quadrants are people you can learn from, even though your way up may not be the same as theirs. All these directions can be up.